Allah opened for us the immense blessings of Shah Ramadan, the month, the holy month of Ramadan in which Allah want to dress the servant with all the immense realities that Allah has bestowed into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and that Prophet has bestowed and taught to his holy companions, his holy family and only Allah be samahi wa filan. And they give us those teachings to inspire us the immensity of what Allah wants to give in Ramadan, not only what Zahiri people teach us but the immensity from the oceans of Malakut and the realities, the lights, all the stations that Allah wanted for and son to achieve that guided many to the turuqs, istiqamu fi tariqat that hold firm to your tariqat and then they described why because it was the path in which to complete your covenant to Allah and that from the holy hadith of Prophet that a believer can be many things but he's not a liar. And they explained that, no this is the lies of heavens, lies of dunya, oh, we see so many believers lying all day long. So what Prophet meant from that holy hadith is that they can't lie to Allah on what they promised. Your mouth can but that's why Allah says, I'm going to seal your mouth, your hands will talk. So the lie from the heavens is what was important that I have angels and all creation bearing witness to what you promised and what you said you would accomplish on earth, what you said you were going to do with this soul and this chance of life that I give to you. If I give to you this chance, what you would do with it? And that's why the believers every time they meditate and a faiz comes to them, a ruhaniyat comes to them especially if inayatullah comes in which Allah at that moment feels a, a pleasure and a satisfaction with the servant and like a breeze it hits the servant and they feel a closeness and a proximity and they begin to cry. And the crying was because of the promise and the covenant they made to Allah If you're not crying and you're not feeling a, a sense of, of that nearness then you have to try to connect even stronger. That to feel a, a, a sense that you, you're, you, you don't feel a warning within the heart that you promised Allah Means that's when the heart becomes so clean, so so purified, so filled with lights every time it begins to make the connection with them, the, the immensity of tears and a fear within their soul and that real and, and inner reality is that it knows what it promised Allah of the time it was given on what it would achieve and that's why Prophet described, you're accountable for your time. If Allah gives you time in life it wasn't you know just a time that appeared out of nowhere but that was a time in which to reflect and to, to contemplate and, and that's why the, the purpose of muraqabah and to know oneself is, what did I promise Allah and I don't know my lifespan, I don't know it's going to be a hundred years on this earth or forty years on this earth or thirty years on this earth. And the purpose of awliyaullah is to reach to us our covenant. One is to open the awareness, are you aware that you made a promise to Allah So if you hear our voice you can't lie anymore to yourself, no I don't know, I don't, I'm not aware of that. So no I heard the shaykh said, I made a promise. And my life now is to find out what that promise is and that's the duty and responsibility of guides is to through their teaching, through their sobats, through their practices, through your interaction is bring you to that covenant. What you promised Allah and how to achieve that promise. So that's the immensity of, of this reality, their medicine 
or these types of teachings, last days, events of difficulty bring awareness to what is already all around us. So that the hope of dunya, the love of dunya, the love that makes the person enter into their heart and become heedless of their promise. So when they're talking of dunya is that they're faqir billahi ta'ala that they're poor in comparison to Allah But the poverty is not a physical poverty, the poverty is a poverty within their hearts. That the love of dunya is not going to enter to their heart to be a distraction from their covenant and what they promised to Allah And that's the importance for awliyaullah and to live amongst awliyaullah is that they inspire within us what that covenant was, what is it that we promised from Allah and how to draw near to it. So that when you begin to meditate and you feel the sense of crying and you think it's for all the reasons that may be coming to your mind but the real re- reason of the crying is that you promised Allah and the fear and it's not a fear of punishment, it's a fear of shame. That am I, am I going to feel embarrassed in front of your majestic might with all my love for you that I came short and I didn't do all that I could have done or should have done. And that becomes the immense reality. Ramadan is an immense gift from Allah that I know how much the shaitans bother you throughout the year, how much they put difficulty upon you, how much you are struggling to reach my ridha and satisfaction. I grant you that reality enter into a state of fasting. And nobody can say that they can't fast. Anything and every intention Allah will give its reward. So we would train the children who are younger that you can go half a day break and then regain your fast for the rest of the day. If you're elderly you try to fast whatever you can based on stopping taking your medicine, abstaining, trying to eat just the one time a day. Anything that you can do that can reach to that reality based on your limitations, your sickness, whatever the difficulty of the servant is, they try to take the barakah of the immensity of that month. And that's, that's the reality that Allah said, just enter into this state and I begin to dress you with these lines, bless you with these lines. And you can only achieve them by the siyam. And then each year the siyam become more important. Yet up I did the siyam last year of the fasting of regular people. This year, Ya Rabbi, I want to fast with my ears, I want to fast with my eyes, I want to fast with my breath. I want to fast with all my faculties so that they all can reach a sense of purity and cleanliness, the fasting of my breath, fasting of what I say, fasting of being conscious of what I say and that I don't have to say more than what's necessary. I keep to myself, keep to my zikr, make my my sense of isolation and, and do the practices that are necessary. So when people are talking about how to prepare for Ramadan, they should have been preparing for the eight months. That's why if you follow the guides they were preparing you for Ramadan. They were preparing on each talk and each example and sit and meditate and contemplate and thousand questions and thousand answers for what? So that you use that tool on this month. As soon as the month begins you're showering, welcoming the holy month of Ramadan that Ya Rabbi like the dead be washed before they enter the grave to meet your presence. I'm stepping into the shower like a qusud that wash me and wash all my sins, wash all my badness and prepare me for this holy month, dress me from the lights of this holy month, dress me with the secret and the lights of holy Qur'an of which I can read, not read, look at the Qur'an, let the lights of the Qur'an to dress the soul. And then the meditation, the practices, breathing, connecting, all of that was the preparation for Ramadan. Sit with the app, you don't have to look here, you don't have to look there how Allah made everything to be on the lap of the believer. 
before you have books here, books there, uh, something on a cassette here, something on a, on a… something there. They put it all together, say, start reciting these salawats, start reciting all these du'as, start to recite all these awrads, sit in your time of reflection and meditation, connect your hearts and ask that from Allah divine the presence to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad to the presence of awliyaullah. And then I'm asking from these awliyaullah to reflect into my heart and dress my heart, bless my heart. So these eight, eight months of training was for preparation. That's why you, you see the schools of the elite are so much different than everything else. But I don't think the people who are in those schools even realize that they're in the school of elite training. Because you see all over the internet, how to prepare for Ramadan and 200,000 people are clicking and because they're all day long doing nothing and their practices are nothing. And it came to them one time in their life that this month is coming, let me see what I'm supposed to be doing. But by the grace of Allah's might and majesty, the love of Sayyidina Muhammad we've all been enrolled in a school that eight months is training us for Ramadan. Sit, meditate, contemplate, don't bother people, be good, have gracious character, don't fight, don't argue, all of those with the preparations for the month of rewards, the month of mercy. Abab rahmah the first 10 days is, is, a, is a gate of mercy. Who, who in these eight months has been training what the mercy is? The mercy is Sayyidina Muhammad So you don't have to try to figure that out for somebody who said, okay how to prepare for Ramadan. For eight months you were trained on being at the gate of mercy. Every muraqabah they said, sit, close, see your eyes at Babur Rahmah. Rosa Sharif in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad is rahmatan lil alameen sallallahu alaihi wasallam. If Prophet finds pity on you and looks at you that eight months you've been sitting at my Rosa and I'm looking at you. I feel a pity for you, I feel a love for you. That was the rahmah of Allah That was your training. Of course then in a state of fasting the 10 days is what? The Bab al mercy is that Prophet is dressing his ahbab and lovers with an immense love from Allah So immense dressings of, of uh, rahmah and mercy. And then the next 10 days they say, the Bab al Mafia. Because if Prophet took your love, dressed you for mercy, then what? No doubt, قُلِينِ كُنْتُمْ تُهِبُونَ اللَّهِ فَتَبِيُونِ يُهِبُكُمُ اللَّهِ That Allah begin to grant you maqfirah and dressing of all of your sins, forgive you, forgive you, forgive you. And then, اتْكُمْ مِنَ النَّارِ is to be forgiven the last 30 days from fire. Of course how you can be in fire if the rahmah of Prophet dressing, maghfirah of Prophet is dressing, jawuka that when you oppress her to yourself that you go to the presence of the rahmah, go to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and he begins to ask for your forgiveness and you begin to ask the forgiveness from Allah and the forgiveness from Sayyidina Muhammad that is the reality of maghfirah. Imagine somebody who didn't study that, they have only a portion of the, of the equation. When Allah giving the secret of maghfirah and forgiveness, jawuka wa astaghfirullah wa astaghfirukum rasul. So Allah is giving the secret, my forgiveness, you have to be in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Imagine 99% of the nation doesn't know that. So they're asking, they're asking, Allah is rahmah alhamdulillah. But it's not like that. It's not from the training of the khawas and the elite in which Allah gave them the understanding. You are not normal, you're not taking regular washing. You are going to the threshold of the reality of maghfirah. 
that they run to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad with their knot, with their love, with their salawats, with all their actions and say that nobody can ask this forgiveness except you. Nobody can to enter the presence of Allah with the, the reality in which you have, Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasulul Kareem, with this love I have for you that I'm, I'm a, a beggar at your threshold. I, I only know how to sing praises and say beautific things for you, not my actions are correct, not my mannerisms are correct, not my deeds are correct but my love for you is my, my way towards Allah's rida and satisfaction. So then no doubt Allah dressing, blessing the servant. Why? Because imagine then the love that Allah has for Prophet that if you like this one, this beggar coming to your door with all this bad characteristic, I have to clean him just to make him worthy to be in your, your holy presence. This is the love that Allah has for Sayyidina Muhammad If we understood the reality of ishq and love and muhabbat, then we would understand that if I'm beggar, I'm dirty, I'm nothing but I have love for you Sayyidi Ya Rasulul Kareem. If Prophet present you, Allah said, I will clean him just so that he's not dirty in your presence. Imagine you have a love and, and you have something as a gift, you want to bring it, it's dirty. You don't let it to go dirty into the presence of that king. Allah make it to be pure and purified just so that it can be in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad so this is the immensity of, of rahmah and mercy and maghfirah and etqum min an nar is the immensity of the servant to be presented their position in Jahannam, to clean the position in Jahannam, to take away all the badness from that position in Jahannam and to make it a, a position in paradise and the lights of paradise. Because everybody has a space reserved in Jahannam. And that space, its fire can only be extinguished by the intercession of Sayyidina Muhammad Otherwise that servant's position, that place Allah has reserved for him like a table at a restaurant, it's sitting waiting for them. That place in Jahannam is where your nafs is born from and that it accompanies you to take you back to that place. It born to be a partner with shaitan. So means then all this training was to put that fire out. So in the last 10 days of Ramadan with all this love, all this mercy, then all the meditations and all the practices is, Ya Rabbi let me see my place in this place of difficulty that was reserved for me and all my salawats that let the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad come and extinguish this fire and make it no more a place of Jahannam but a, ja a place of paradise. And that's from holy verse of Qur'an when Prophet is amongst you, never will Allah punish you while He's amongst you. And they know that to keep the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad in everything they do is a protection of every type of difficulty. So they saw themselves in their graves, in their place of difficulty and Ayatul Kareem comes to dress to them that never will I punish you if he is amongst you while he is amongst you and while you are asking in forgiveness. So that Ayatul Kareem is the secret and the realities of the last 10 days of Ramadan. That Ya Rabbi your promise from Holy Qur'an to be true that I'm asking the presence of Prophet from first 10 days, second 10 days, these last 10 days with me and that with this holy presence with me, this salawats, this maghfirah, all of this to extinguish these fires for the sake of the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and make it to be a place of paradise and beatific lights and beatific energies and that fire that dresses and extinguishes the, the, that light, that extinguishes that fire in your place in Jahannam, it brings a sakina and good energy to the bad nafs. As much as your place in Jahannam is raging with fire, your nafs is very strong. 
So Ramadan, why Ramadan is the, is the force that extinguishes everything is because if Allah begin to grant the lights of itqa min nar that, that rain that comes upon that fire is a rain that begins to diminish the power of the bad nafs and the wicked nafs, the evil nafs. Until the nafs that accompanies you becomes a nafs like a support that encourages you towards goodness and good and kind actions, actions in which Allah to be pleased with inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzatami yasifoon wa salaaman al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa siri Surat al Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.